Welcome back to How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom, Anime Review Episode Number Six. This is the sixth episode of the anime. The wisdom that wisdom some sometimes turns away and does not give up profits. Yes, that is seriously the name of the episode. Yeah, that's the episode I got here. The actual title of the episode that was the. Well, translated title, the actual title of the episode is The Wise Man Never Forsakes an Advantage. Now, this episode adapts from pretty much the rest of Chapter 4. And you're thinking, really? That's it? It doesn't adapt from the next chapter? Not from what I can tell. I think they finally, you know, had an episode where they just focused on one portion of a chapter. And they pretty much just finished up there. Now, this episode does pick up, well, before we start off basically going to where we left off the previous week, we have sort of an explanation of the dukedoms. Yep, we have an explanation. That comes up a little bit just after this, the explanation of dukedoms. And here they put it at the start of the episode. We explain the three leaders, how much under the army. I think they said it's like the, the commission, the army, navy, and air force. Who's underneath them? Basically, the three people are. There is Duchess XL Water, who in the books they reveal she's actually Juno's grandmother. And she, well, she looks exactly like her. She's very lovely for a woman her age. She is in charge of the Navy. The army is basically run by a guy by the name of. Well, he's somebody who Lucia does know pretty well. It was let's see if I can find his name. Let's see. Uh, General Castor. General Castor Vagas. He's in charge of the Air Force. General Gord Carmine, which they mentioned him in the episode. He is in charge of the army. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they explain in the episode about well going to the army and then of course we figure out who the two people are arguing and in the last week's episode the guy is somebody Lysia knows his name is Halbert he is the son of a respected nobleman who is closely affiliated with the army the army head and the woman which of course Lysia doesn't recognize not even Sultima it's actually Juna who actually recognizes her name is kind of tough she is well but of course he he says in the book he says in his head he thinks that she might be a mystic fo- a mystic wolf no she's actually a mystic fox due to the fact she's got a tail and of course there is a long bickering session over well her him joining the um the actual army under duke carmine the one who's an actual lion and possibly go against the king. And of course they argue for a bit. And then of course Sultima basically. Gets up at the hearing for quite a while. And he's like really want to say it's my face. And in the book. They don't mention they did this at all. Where in the anime they had. Pretty much you had. Sultima. Lysia. Ashia. Juno. Uh, Juno excuse me. Halbert and Kaede. Go to a sort of a private room. And Kaede knows who this is right away just by looking at him. Halbert, just like in the book, did not initially recognize him. And he says the same line that he did in the book. It's like, did you not remember my face? Halbert. And, of course, like, he's like, and of course he hides by the couch right next to guy, Which I found to be so funny. And, of course, what well, he got chewed off, basically, what he just said. And... And then apparently, we raft this. Now, in the book, this scene took place before they went to the restaurant. When you go to the, the park, like, raft it. Of course, you just, what, what are you doing here? I'm just, just popped in the cafe on my day off. That's basically what he says. And, of course, now, he looked like he's about, before he finally finds out who he really is, he's about to strike him. But Aisha basically decided to stop him. In the book, it kind of implied that 
But let's see. Also got into this one's action too. In the in the anime, she didn't, and it's hinted that that Juna was going to interfere too, because she's got like a little like special fork behind her back just in case. Though she doesn't bring in the fact she has, that the that the rest of her doesn't tolerate violence, which that was kind of the anime due to the fact that moved this to a private room, which I was perfect. I think that was perfectly fine. I mean, if you're gonna have this conversation and you want to keep a low profile, take it to a private room. Basically, is very reasonable enough. And in Rathavis, this conversation, they go to the park where you have Aziza just laying down, just falling asleep. You have Sotoma, you well, you have Lucia asking Sotoma how you use her lap as a pillow while they chat for a bit about how they like each other. And of course, Aziza's like, you want me to continue pretending to sleep? And then we cut to the very next day where Sotoma showing off his, his doll he made and, of course, making it all jump, whatever. And then Serena, the maid, comes by and says that... Halbert, his father, and Kaede are basically here in the throne room requesting your presence. Because I was like, okay. And of course, we see that Halbert apparently had, been, had the crap beaten out of him off screen. They do have a slight wording change here. And the book says, oh, your handsome look's gotten better. And the anime's like, oh, you look a little different. <laughs> yep, he got beaten up. And of course, the, the guy who's his father, his name is Galvish, I believe his name is. It is God, I think it's how pronounce it. Yes. Where basically he does apologize for his son's remarks and for the incident. Oh, you mean only what happened yesterday? It wasn't much of an incident basically because it happened behind the scenes. Yes. Now, what he's saying is exactly true for the book itself. No really change to word of dialogue here. So, there is, a, there is a tiny bit of an order change. They did this also a couple episodes back where they saved something where you whisper something at the end of the episode, which is very similar to what they did a couple of episodes back with Tomei, when she's basically got, uh, she contacted a demon. Here, it's, they put this just after that. Yeah, they put that after what happens next. At the basically not deciding to check, censor him, that's what he says. Excuse me. He tells, Ka he tells Katie that she is promoted to a staff officer and put under General U L Ludwig. And as in the case of Halbert, he is basically transferred from the army to the Forbidden Army and to become her agent. In the book, he said basically it was her second command, but agent's kind of close enough as, as it is. Basically, he should be close by, and he says that if he had joined the army, the whole thing of a basic return and use as a hostage. That was a bit of additional dialogue they gave for the end, which is perfectly fine. I don't think Funimation really have issue with that. And of course, Katie is, is like shocked the fact she's promoted to a staff officer. And then of course, we have it to where Gav asks for a private word with the king like no one else can hear. So everyone clears the room. You have Aisha standing at the car at the door. And then you have Lucia having tea with Okay, who just got promoted to a staff officer, and Halbert. This, of course, was a this is this little this little mini moment in the episode was really good. Get a chat and chat. And I was like, and she's like, oh, I never expected to have. Basically, I never thought I would have tea with the princess, which I found that to be quite hilarious. I thought that was so good. The fact they did that. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, this was a damn good episode. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, of course, I can't wait for next week. Yep. Well, next week's episode, which, according to the translated title, it's going to be called Ancient Yude. I'm sure they're probably going to change it for next week. But, yeah, that's it for this particular review. Stay tuned for next episode, which will be the case study of Valantes, which is also episode 6. Okay, see you next video. Bye.